war. It has plagued humanity for as long as we can remember. Many millions have spent their lives and shed their blood fighting for causes which may not have been in their best interest. But did you know that there has been a war raging for thousands of years, with both sides suffering terrible losses and some amazing victories? Perhaps you might be wondering, what's this war all about? The two things that wars have always been fought over. The hearts of the people and power. Howdy everyone, I'm the King's Bard, and today we are going to be talking about the greatest war in history. There are probably a lot of questions that you have about this war. Who are the belligerents, the people involved? What are they fighting for? What are they fighting about? What's, you know, how are they fighting? There's a lot of different questions, a lot of different things that we can really uh, ask. And in order to get those answers, we need to turn to one of the most important books in the entire world, and that's the Bible. But of course, before we do that, let's go ahead and bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace and mercy. I just ask, Lord, that you would please be with us now as we open up your word, as we look to things in the past, and as we see things to come. Thank you so much again, Lord, for everything you've done. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. The Bible is one of the oldest texts that you can imagine. It is... Uh, it has extended for many, many thousands of years. It covers many thousands of years of history. I'm not going to get into the veracity of the Bible today. That's another topic that we might go into at, at some other point. But today we are going to be talking about war, the greatest war in history. Where did it start? How did it begin? Um, who are the ones who are fighting over it? Well, you've probably guessed by now, because I've brought up the Bible, that I may be referring to something to do with God and Satan. And you are absolutely right if that's what you thought, because that is exactly where we're going. Now, of course, the question then comes, well, how did it start? What happened? Was there war at all between God and Satan? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to open up the Bible, and that's what we're going to do. So turn in your Bibles, if you have them with you, to, Ezekiel, uh, to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, and we're going to look at verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So there was war in heaven. Now that's a strange thought. War being fought in heaven. But here we clearly see the two sides, the belligerents. And this is something that has continued to go on for as long as, well, this earth's history. Um, in fact, if you look in Revelation 12, 17, you can see that the dragon, Satan, goes to make war with the remnant of the seed of the woman, the woman being the church, God's people. So this war between God and the devil extends to those who are also the followers of God, those who are his people. And so, this war has been going on for a very, very long time. And it actually was first talked about in Genesis. We'll get to that a little later. But, we see here that there was indeed war in heaven. And we see the two sides. Michael, standing for God, and Lucifer, or Satan, the devil, the dragon. Right. So we have these two sides, these two sides coming at each other and fighting and warring. Now, what does this mean? How did this start? I mean, you know, th there was war in heaven. Okay, you know, that, that's, yeah, I guess that that's, makes sense, I suppose, in some respects, you know. But at the same time, not really, because first of all, isn't heaven supposed to be a peaceful place? And how did war get there? And what's the devil doing up in heaven anyway? 
Well, in order to answer that question, we need to turn to the book of Ezekiel, and that is where we're going to go to next. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, and we're going to begin in verse 12. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is that this verse, or this passage that we're going to be looking at, is addressing the king of Tyre, or Tyrus. And uh, many people have this idea that this must only therefore be referring to the king of Tyre and not be referring to anyone else. But as we see in the case of Jesus and what he did when he gave prophecies in Matthew 25 and other related chapters, you can see that uh, prophecies have dual applications. They often apply to a literal historical event, but also an, an extended prophetic event, something that is to come not only literally at the time, but uh, immediately at the time, but also far in the future, uh, or referring to something in the past. Now listen to this. Ezekiel 28, starting in verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. And he goes on to describe him. Right. And how beautiful he was. And all these stones, these precious stones, which are the priestly stones. Uh, and it says here, in verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub or angel that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast on the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of, sto of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. So, who is this being that's being talked about? There is a being, this king of Tyre, who is a cherub, and he was in heaven, he walked on the stones of fire, he was on the mountain of God. This is clearly not, and he was in the Garden of Eden. He was a high priest of God. Clearly this is not talking about the pagan king of Tyre, or the pagan kingdom of Tyre. This is talking about someone behind the scenes who is manipulating or using the king of Tyre and who God is using to represent, or is using the king of Tyre to represent. So, this being, this entity, was an angel, a cherub, a covering cherub. Now, what does that mean? Well, a covering cherub refers to the, um, what am I thinking of? It refers to the Ark of the Covenant, where you have the two angels or the two cherubs stretching out their wings over the mercy seat, covering the mercy seat. So, uh, and the, the presence of God dwelled right there in the midst of them. So, uh, you have this covering cherub is this being that's being talked about. And he says it was perfect. This, this angel was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful in every way until iniquity or sin was found in him. Now, we don't really have time to get into exactly what that was, right? Um, but if you want to know a bit more about the details, you can take a look at Isaiah chapter 14, which talks about this being named Lucifer, the son of the morning, right? This this light bearer, son of the morning, is what the name literally means, child of the dawn. And this, <clears throat> how do I say this? Um, this individual decided instead of one, instead of just being content with where he was, he decided to go up and try to grasp the throne of God itself as his own. Indeed, to not only grasp it, but to set his own throne above the throne of God. He said, I will set my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Now, of course, this is not a good thing to do when you are a created being fighting up against the one that created you. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but then again, you know. At the same time, there's a lot of things that I do that don't make sense either, so, to be fair. But, this is how the war began. 
this being, Lucifer, decided, you know what? I don't want to be in my allotted role. Even though I am in the very presence of God all the time, I am the covering cherub. I am the one who is in the presence of God. Probably he was the chief of all the angels, the first of all the, I mean, son of the dawn. That, that you know, son of the dawning, that really makes it sound like he might very well have been the very first being ever created that uh, that was ever formed out of the master's hand. And, you know, someone like that is, has, you know, I'm sure had authority over most of the angels. And so you would have thought at least, if not all the other angels, under God himself. And it was this entity, this being, who said, you know what, I don't want to just be content with that anymore. I want to rule. I want to be over God. I don't want God to control me. I want to have my own control over the universe. Well, that's a problem. Because God had principles that he ran his government by. That... This entity, this being, this angel, did not like. You see, this being, this angel, said, you know what, I don't, I don't want to be constrained by this anymore. I want to follow my own way. I want to do what I want to do. Now, that sounds okay. That sounds good until we hear what Jesus says about this particular mindset in the book of John, where Jesus says of Satan, he was a murderer from the beginning. Now, of course, that's not talking about the beginning when he was created, but the beginning when he fell to sin. So when he began to think, oh, look at me, I'm all that, you know, your heart was corrupted because of your beauty, Ezekiel tells us a little later on in Ezekiel 28. Your heart was corrupted because of your beauty. Isaiah says, I want, you know, Isaiah tells us, he said, I want to be God. Ezekiel says, you were perfect, you were beautiful, and that corrupted you. You thought you were all that. You see, Lucifer began to think more of himself than of other people. He thought, you know what? I'm better than you. I'm better than you. I have authority over all these angels. In fact, the only one who's over me is God. And you know what? I think I'd like to be in charge for a change. You know, I think I can do a better job of ruling the universe and ruling my own life than God. So I'm going to try it. Now, that's probably not exactly what went through his head. and We probably won't ever know. But what we can say, and, and just to be clear, we can't, you know, there's no explanation for it. But what we can say is that this really is not a good way of thinking because God is love, right? We're told that God is love. And God didn't just tell us that. He showed us that, which we'll get to. So God was all about love. His law is a law of love. And Satan said, no, 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 no. Giving yourself up for others, letting others have priority over you, loving your neighbor as yourself? No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I want to take care of just me. They can take care of themselves just fine. In fact, it's better that way. Now, here's a problem. There had never been anything like this before in heaven or in the universe. That's a big problem. How do you know that what the devil is saying is bad? We know, right, as you know, as human beings who have lived in the same kind of world that the devil had wanted to organize, the same type of government that the devil wanted to put into place, the government of selfishness, of self-rule, of, uh, of being, uh, of me being more important than everybody else, we live in that world today, and all the wars, all of the trials, all the plagues and pestilence, all the crime and everything else that has come about in this world is a direct result of the same philosophy that the devil put into place. 
that philosophy of I am better than you, I am more important than you because I am me. I need to take care of my own rights, my own privileges, my own needs. And if you won't take care of my needs, or if you won't you know, fulfill what I need you to do, then it doesn't matter what needs you have, I'm going to put myself as more important than you. And as a result, we have murder, we have theft, we have adultery, we have all these other things, we have greed, and all these other problems that show up. We know, looking back, hey, that's not necessarily the best way of thinking, of doing things. But nobody had seen that at the time. That, hadn't, that didn't exist in God's universe. Up to this point, God's universe had been perfect, with no flaws, no problems at all, nobody questioning anything. And now all of a sudden, this individual, the highest of all angels, is saying, well, hey, maybe things aren't actually all that hunky-dory after all. In fact, you know, who even you know, said that we should worship God anyway. What, 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 what's that all about? Is that really love? You know, and maybe, you know, maybe there needs to be some changes around here. Who knows exactly what he said or what exactly he began to say, uh, to uh, think or whatnot. But regardless, he began to tell these things to other angels. Perhaps he said, you know, he, he did it in a way that was innocuous at first, you know, saying, oh, I'm just concerned about this, you know, you know, brother so-and-so, Raphael, uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, you know, I, I've, I've, I've got some questions. And, you know, maybe they were genuine questions at first. Maybe they weren't, who knows. But whatever the cause, what, however genuine or uh, disingenuous it, the questions were, the devil began to work in different ways ways in different places. Now, well, <laughs> um, eventually the devil said, you know what? I am done. I have support and I am going to do something about it. And so he gathered all those who believed what he was saying and he marched up, he must have marched up to God and said, hey, I want change. This is a coup. We are taking over. You need to let us do what we want to do. We don't want to serve you any longer. We want to do our own thing. Now, we don't know exactly how many, you know, the exact number of how many angels were around him, but the book of Revelation tells us that it was around a third of the angels who he drew uh, to rebellion with him into this coup. And this is where this war starts. Because God says, well, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that in heaven. The question then arises, well, why, you know, if God is really, you know, all that, why didn't he just, you know, stop it? Why didn't he just stop the war? I mean, you know, he knew that the devil was wrong and that the angels that fell with him were, you know, were wrong. He knew that he was in the right and that the angels were in the, the angels who were loyal to him were in the right. So why didn't God do anything about it? And the answer is he did. But he did it in a way that we wouldn't think of. You see, again, questions had been asked that needed to be answered. And so God had to allow this war to continue, to allow these beings, these entities, these fallen angels to set up their government. And so in order to do so, he said, well, look, basically, you know what? You can do your thing, just not here in heaven. Sure, you can try and set up a government, just not here. We can't let you do it here. And the devil said, well, but I want, this is my home. I want to do it here. And God said, well, you can't. Fine. We'll, we'll take it by force. I'm sure is something that the devil must have said. And war broke out. Michael and Satan facing off. Now, I don't know exactly how it worked, exactly what happened. I don't know if there was any physical combat. It seems to be that maybe there was. Um, although the word in the Greek, uh, in Revelation 12, 7, 
is polemia, meaning a war of words. And so there may have been something, but it almost seems at the same time like the, you know, the fallen angels were kicked out of heaven. So, you know, there must have been something physical at least. I don't know. Uh, and I'm not sure that we can ever really know uh, until the final day uh, exactly what's going on, but uh, in that respect, exactly how the wars are fought. Uh, but what we can say is that it was at that point when Satan and his angels fell from heaven that the war in heaven, as far as the actual physical combat, was over. But, or at least the battle in heaven was over. It was the first battle. But the war had only just begun. We can trace this war through the Bible, through the history. Uh, we can see different stages of it along the way. And we will be talking about that more in our next video. So once again, what's this war all about? Where did it come from? Who started it? It is a war that started in heaven between God and Satan with God being in the right, but still choosing to allow the devil to do the wrong thing so that it's shown that the wrong thing is bad. And when Satan got down here to earth, he deceived Adam and Eve, he deceived humanity, and brought them into rebellion with it. So what is God going to do about this war. Well, what has he done? What has he done? That's what we're going to be talking about next week, next video. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, once again, I am the King's Bard. Until we meet again, farewell.